one guess, two guess, three guess, four. The thief was a real boar. Experimental unit clone force. Hi, I did not. Hi, y'all. The defective clones. Were Told the Jeremiah don't mess around, dude. I'll probably shouldn't say that. Shoot. Probably shouldn't say that word. The bad batch. everyone, welcome back to another Bad Batch-tastic episode of Empire Radio. I'm Jeremiah. I'm Drew. And we are back with Bad Batch, Season 2, Episode 10, Retrieval. And that sounds about right. <laughs> um, <sighs> well, before we get started, if I sound terrible... It's because I have COVID for the very first time in my life. So, <laughs> that too. <laughs> Double. <laughs> so, I'm not too terrible right now. Hopefully, I stay pretty mild with my symptoms. But if I sound off, that's nasally. That's, that's why. So, I'll get through it. I will persevere. But, you're here for Bad Batch. And we had a, so last week we had, so for some reason I couldn't type a question in to Spotify for our Q and A, but I could only do a poll. So the poll was, is the what? thief from last episode, someone we know and was it 77% said yes. And 23% said no. <laughs> well, whoever that 23% is. Good job. Good for you, because, you know, that's dumb. We love reading I, those off. I don't know why it wouldn't let me. It was like I refreshed it and stuff, but just so if it was just like a, a one time yeah, error on their end. But, uh, but yeah. So the thief. I think Go ahead. In hindsight, before we get into this, I think that because it wasn't someone we know, I think that might have had me kind of. My views on this episode might be a little swayed because of that, just so you guys are aware. Yeah, I think we set ourselves up for failure by thinking it was Boba Fett or somebody we knew. So yeah. the moment I saw that it wasn't someone we knew, I was like, oh. So I was already disappointed from like... I was like so mad. Two minutes <laughs> like, in. I was like, okay, well, here we go. Which, you know... There's always well, next week. There's a lot yeah. of people that... You know, season three is next week, so we got that going for us. There's a lot of people who don't like all the cameos in animated shows because it makes the universe small. Like, we run to the same five characters in every show, which is some people... It's just a valid gripe, but... Whatever. I still want, at some point, Omega and Boba Fett to meet. Whether Omega, that's... Omega, Boba Fett, Hondo, like... I don't know, like... The first time I watched last week, like, you guys listened, I was freaking out because I thought it was Hondo the whole time. I was super pumped. And then Jeremy was like, no, it's not Hondo. And I looked, I'm like, you know what? That's Boba. And now it wasn't either of them. And, and then I had no interest at all in this episode. And I don't know, you got, this is probably the hottest take of all time. I'm over the show completely now. I have, like, yeah, I don't care I, about it. I don't. I I still have like, faith that there's going to be some a good ending, but... There probably is going to be a good ending, but it's not going to matter because we're going to be so into season three of Mandalorian that I no one's going to care. Yeah. And and it's a hot take, and I understand that, and there's going to be people that are going to be mad, and we're going to get voicemails next week, and that's why I bring, them up, bring in those voicemails. I'm okay. <laughs> you send them our way. Let's... We're talking to you, Eddie. I know you yes. come, come at us for our criticism of some episodes. But so. I, I, I just like, what are we doing? Why do we have so many episodes that aren't doing anything to this character? Like, everyone, 
like all the predictions I was seeing online too about last week were like Hunter and what's her name are gonna get into it and like what's the trust behind there. Well, nothing even that didn't even gets like yeah with the whole shit thing like, like that didn't even what, matter. That doesn't even matter that she was gonna come in three days or two days. Like they just figured it out themselves. So like that point didn't even matter. So what was the point in that? And then. Like this, like tension that we're supposed to have with these two, these characters with her, doesn't exist for me. Even though that's what they're trying to do, it doesn't work. Like, there's nothing there. Like we're supposed to have this tension between those two characters, and we're not supposed to trust her. But who cares? Like they keep figuring it out by themselves. They don't need her. So like, what's the point? Like, I don't understand. Like maybe the next episode they're gonna meet, and she's gonna be like. Well, I was gonna come get you, but I had things to do. Well, you weren't here fast enough. But it's like, who cares? They already figured it out. So you're arguing over something dumb. Like I don't, I don't know. Like I'm with you, Jeremiah. Like there's definitely gonna be a solution to this sh- this season, and it's gonna be really cool. But like, why are we wait- like these two episodes still didn't do anything for the show? In hindsight, last week's episode did nothing for the show. And did besides. You- how many episodes has Crosshair been in? Has it only been one, one episode? One episode, and we're at episode 10 of 16, right? Yeah. And we've I seen him one time. Think it's just and he, once. And then this, and the bad person, the big the tagginess in the show is dead or gone now. Yeah, Rampart. so it's like, what? what are we doing? <laughs> like, that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't understand what this show is anymore. Like, yeah. it's just, like, very... It's becoming, like, just a filler show. And I don't know why. And there's no way that people are gonna just keep watching this show come next week. When Mando Season 3 comes out. The viewership for the show is just gonna tank. And because of that, which is sad, but because of that, we're not gonna... They might not give it... Give us a n- next season if there is a next season. You know what I mean? Like, Well, if there's... If they've already been planning on a, a third season, it's already been in, in production. So, Well, we like, haven't heard anything. And we already know that they're <laughs> writing season four of Mando. Of, of Mando and they're already already in production for season two of Ahsoka. They announced that yesterday, that they're in production of season two of Ahsoka. Are you sure? I thought that was the book of Boba Fett. No, I didn't, I didn't. Well, I, don't I know. thought I, I heard that, know. that that's in pre-production. I saw on IGN that they were, they announced like two. I think it was yesterday. Well, well, okay. So they Disney published like their releases for this year, mm-hmm. and they changed Ahsoka from a limited series to season one. And so mm-hmm. there's that that it seems to be that there's going to be more seasons of Ahsoka. So that came out last week. So yeah, I I saw on IG's page on Facebook that they were saying that. Dirty in production of season two of Ahsoka, but that could be they're like starting to write it. Like it could be right. Like, I don't know. Storyboarding. Like, it. I doubt that we're gonna get season two of Ahsoka before season four of Mando, but maybe not. And we're also it, it, getting a uh, skeleton crew this year, I believe. Oh, true. So, which is My- supposed to take place during the same time as the Mando verse, even though. I think it's they're not supposed to overlap in story, but like this is happening at the same time. Um, but I don't know. But yeah, Bad Batch has been a disappointment so far. Yeah, uh, my my question is, like, do we think that we're going to get? Do you think like how much Dave's influence is in this season? Well, he's head of animation, but I do agree that he's probably put more focus on Ahsoka and Mando Season 3. and Mando Season 3. But he's just the head of animation, so he's not necessarily writing all the episodes. could be a title, then he could not even be in the room, and he disapproves it when the show's done. Right. So, um, I don't think if you look at, like, the writers and directors, I don't think he's done anything... I I, can, I I would try. I thought I tried to look. I don't remember. I don't remember seeing his name yet. I can look it up right now. Um, 
season two. Yeah, no, nothing has been written by Dave, Dave Filoni. And so honestly, it's obvious. How much so, of season one did he write? Um, looks like it's just one that he he was involved in, which was the 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 pilot, the first episode he co wrote. Um, but I don't know. The Kinda amazing has, one. The like one that's hour and 15 two minutes. Hour, <laughs> two hour long. So I don't know. It's weird. I don't know. I, I'm coming in hot and I apologize. Jeremiah is hot because he has a fever. Cause he has I don't a... have a fever yet. Don't <laughs> jinx me. I just have a bad but throat. Like, yeah, I don't know. Do we have a voicemail from Addy to? No, we don't. Oh, okay. we will probably have one next week now that we've mentioned her twice oh now. we're definitely <laughs> good one next week um got to make sure we play it on bad batch and that mando yeah and the thing is like my biggest fear is that this two episode arc was just to set up benny as a return character for a thief in a future episode oh 100 percent. like they've said it twice or something in this episode that, like he like he can well he and he needs their help like he'll steal something yeah from. yeah at the end he was like well, if you ever need a thief, so it's like, yeah, probably, but like, who cares? Like, I don't know. And I wouldn't have as much gripe about this show, honestly, if it didn't cor core line with the release dates of Mando season three. Right. If this came out when it was supposed to come out, I don't think I would have this issue. Well, it would be going on at the same time as Andor. Which okay, I would still have this issue, but <laughs> um, but yeah. it's just like why why did they like because we're gonna get a summer, we're gonna get this summer with like two episodes or whatever or two months with nothing potentially, and it's just like why wouldn't we they just put that in there, right? Like I don't understand, and like man, well, it was already delayed because it was supposed to be last fall, so they couldn't delay it to the summer. Uh, so they should have, <coughs> or they should have delayed Mando a little bit. Not that I want them to delay Mando. I'm just trying to say, Chad, like it's just, it's rough to expect anyone to keep watching this show once Mando season three comes out. Cause one, that's the only thing they're pushing to. It's everywhere. Like Mando season three clips are like literally everywhere. On right. Disney, on like Star Wars, it's like every day it's a new post about Mando season three. And this show is just like in the background. It's just background noise at this point. Right. And and I feel bad because I like visually the show is amazing. Even in right. this episode, like visually the show is amazing. There's scenes that I'm like, dude, is that real? Like that that that's real. That's not a cartoon. Like that's right. how good the visual effects of the show is. But the writing and the direction we're getting this season is just not near par as Clone Wars or Bad Batch Season 1. And it's just really sad because I know no one's going to watch that. Like, no one's going to – dude, next week, everyone's going to be watching Mando Season 3 four times. Like, they're going to watch that episode, like, three or four times in a row. Like, all of my siblings are like, oh, where are we watching Episode 1 of Mando? Like, whose house are we going to go watch it? Like, that's how hyped everyone is about this new season of Mando. And, like, and if my family who doesn't really watch Star Wars is that hyped, I can't imagine what everyone else is. And if they're into the show, but these episodes are dragging like this, like, yeah, like, Will just says in chat, yeah, I'm already ready for Mando. Like, yeah, like, that's what everyone wants. And I feel bad. Like, I'm more disappointed of the release dates than the actual show. Because if this was by itself, I know it would stand out enough where it wouldn't bother me as much. But because I know next week no one's watching this show again. And it kind of sucks. But if you are, tune into our episode on Thursday because we're going to be breaking it down anyways. Yep. We'll stay faithful. Regardless yes. of how terrible something is. <laughs> yeah. But let's get into 
or scene by scene because my throat's already getting dry and I'm trying to drink. So <laughs> Jeremiah's gonna take a lot of commercial breaks this episode to get water. Yeah, I got Lucy has four VCU commercials that she recorded, so maybe we'll have to play. <laughs> All four of those. All four of those tonight. <laughs> I hope you all sent a lot of voicemails because Jeremiah's not going to listen to them. Oh, yeah, we got one tonight, so. Dang it. <laughs> all right. Episode starts out. The crew is in that little town, abandoned town, trying to fix up a speeder to get to the closest town. But uh, Omega has the idea that they can maybe track Gonky from on the ship. So, awesome idea. Tech didn't even think about that, so he's like, that's an ingenious idea. And so she works on trying to use that radio tower or whatever to whatever track him somehow. So then it flashes to their ship, the M and H, the Havoc or H and M <laughs> Havoc Marauder. And we see we see Gonk. He's walking around, and then we go to the thief. And so he started talking on the radio, and for a second I thought, like, that sounds like the Boba voice from Clone Wars. I, I was like, and even the music was like very Western, right? I was like, there's no way this is in Boba. And he took off his helmet or his face mask or whatever, and it wasn't him. So I was like, mwah, 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 like your button. And so I wasn't even like that. I was like mad. I was like, I don't even want to watch this. Like, I was not happy. But like I said, I think that's because we we were really hoping for Boba. Would this episode change your thoughts of the episode if it were Boba? Probably, because then it would have been a completely different interaction with the crew and with Omega. And and Boba could have still had, like, he could have just been there because he was stranded there. Something he had like no that. Ship to get out or no supplies to leave, so he was gonna steal from these groups. He was working his way to steal. Like, they could have easily threw him in there. Right. And so, we find out that the thief is named Benny. And he radios into his boss, uh, Mako. Also, hot take. Is this the worst Star Wars name of all time? Or is it just me? Benny or Mako? Benny. I don't know. It's got to be up there with the top five worst Star Wars names. I don't know, it's Benny with an I at the end, not a Y, so it's different, so... It's a male version? <laughs> I don't know, so... It is I, It is weird, like, hearing, like, normal human names <laughs> for well, Star Wars I mean, characters. I like, Luke is a normal name. I know, name, but, like, but, it, like, but still, like, Luke, Ben, Ezra... normal, too, but... Ezra is not common, but it's, like... I don't still, know any Ezra's. <laughs> But it's still a, a name that like cool recognize. Name. Maybe I so. should. <gasps> oh, dude. I should definitely try to use that as the next kid. Just not tell stuff where I found the name from. Good luck with that. Well, don't. Because she doesn't don't, like names of this. She doesn't want to know. She doesn't want to know anyone with the same. There you go. Ezra. True. Be e name. Ezra Bridger. <laughs> Shoemaker. <laughs> um, and so... She's not going to know. Will, dude, if you rat on me, I swear. <laughs> bro, you better chill. She's watching right now. It's the first time she's ever watched live. <laughs> like, um, she was on in Valentine's like three years ago. <laughs> right. So, speaking of that... That was this, last It's week. been like... No, but it's like... Is it this week, two years since Lucy sent in the first voicemail? Yeah. It was the, I think it was the week after the Valentine's the, one. The Valentine's Day, the Wives of the Empire. Will, go check it out. Go look. Will, go do some digging. The, do, the episode after Valentine's, it should be on YouTube. Yeah. And it was, I can't remember what the episode was. It might have been how we would view the Force episode. Dang, dude, if you yep. got that off the top remember, of your Remember, no, because I think that was when. Hold My T suggested how would we view the Force based on the High Republic book, like how the Force users had, like, they viewed the Force different ways. Mm -hmm. And so we started out the episode with the voicemail, so it wasn't at the end. I remember I tried looking back once. I'm like, it's not at the end. I can't find it. 
but it was at the beginning when we first we started doing voicemails we did at the beginning of the episode but this actually might be two years this week or maybe it'll be next week or something two years since lucy sent in the first voicemail and we haven't missed we haven't missed a week so it's been a hundred and what is it 104 weeks in a row minus a couple of weeks off that we've had but Cool. Well, congratulations to two years of sending voicemails, everybody. Yeah. Keep sending them in. Also, um, Lucy, send them more. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, uh, Benny returns to his like place where he lives, which is kind of like a Ipsium refinery mine area. And so he goes through a, a vertical tunnel into the ground lands the ship and like, it was a cool landing pad where like the door opened up he landed in and the door closed like pivoted closed i thought that was pretty cool and so marco and all the other like kids there that were it's all like like kids slave later labor um they come out they're like i got the ship for you and marco's like well that's good i guess i guess we'll just have to sell it piece by piece blah 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 and so uh benny is like i want you know a shot at being like the best earner to get like a whatever reward which is we learn his food he's like well you might be we'll have to lay it out like check it out but he's like here's you get some rations and then like oh, i want some water rations so he like takes his water drinks most of it and gives it to the kid for like a couple of drops and so i gotta take a, a cough drop my throat's really killing me <laughs> um but okay so all these kids are like slave labor, fine. Like, okay, this is what we're doing. And so that's when Omega is able to connect with Gonk and they can track them. So they get the, um, the, the speeder going and they, they jump, all jump on the one speeder all the way to the refinery area. Um, and they go and confront the kid who stole Gonk and record clothesline that kid on a speeder. <laughs> That's right. The best part of the whole episode was when it was pretty they, much the most they, intense part of the episode. They almost sure. killed the kid. That was like the best part. <laughs> Anakin would be proud. <laughs> um, so we learn that. This refinery was owned by the Techno Union, which is was a separatist one. They were one of the contributors to the droid factories and all that jazz where they enslaved Echo, which was interesting that Echo wasn't there to see a Techno Union facility. So it would have been interesting to see if he had something to say about that. Um, but uh, the way to sneak in, because they, they basically make Benny show them how to get their ship or get their ship back or whatever. So they have to sneak through a smokestack. Okay. And this was one of the moments where the smokestack at night looked pretty photorealistic to me. It looked really good. This is funny. A smokestack is like the best part of the whole episode. <laughs> um, so they got to time it right so that they don't get like sprayed with fire or whatever. So Hunter goes in first, takes out a droid, barely before he gets burned and then the rest of the crew comes down, whatever. And so they work their way through the refinery. They get to where the hangar is and the ship has been started taking it apart. So classic Star Wars, the hyperdrive is not connected. <laughs> yep. Like, classic Star Wars that's taken out. And so they can't, and even though if they get the ship going, there's a ray shield blocking their way out, covering the hole in the ground where the hangar is. And so, they have to deactivate that first. And so while the crew is fixing the ship, Omega goes with Benny to the control panel to disable the ray shield. And we see Marco eating like the biggest slob, gorging glutton I've ever seen in my entire life. He's just eating everything in his office. And drinking and had more food than anyone in the galaxy it seems like but yeah, all these kids are starving feet up and the droids kept bringing him more stuff and 
but he's literally not feeding the people that are providing. <laughs> yep. And so doesn't really make and any sense. We learn that, or we don't. Well, Benny says that the ipsium that they're uh, mining for is degrading, so it's a lower quality, so they can't sell it for top dollar. So that's why they're poor and all that jazz. And so that's what Marco keeps telling the kids. It's like, you know, production is down because of this, blah, blah, blah. I can't afford to, to feed you, but here's some scraps. Basically that's how he feeds them as the scraps. And so, but the top earner, the one that does the best at mining gets like a food reward. Well, and we, we didn't mention, but Marco is like fat as heck too. Like he's a big guy. Yeah, he's a he's a big dude, which is kind of everyone's starving, but he's massively mm. overweight. I kind of wish they would have made the kids look sicklier. Like he yeah. didn't, they didn't. They kind of made the kids look like, oh, they looked healthy to me, even though like they're acting like they literally haven't had water in weeks. All right, because Benny was like, I've been gone for four days with no water. Yeah, like, is that even possible? I don't know, dude. It can't be possible. <laughs> and, but... and like, and we didn't mention like when he landed the ship, there was like a half-eaten granola bar on the floor, and he freaked out and ate it. Right, which is like, or like that was like a sign right away, like, oh, this guy's not doing well. Right, and so, uh, in order for Benny and Omega to go into the control room. They have to steal an access card. So they steal a card from his rival Draco? 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 Or Drake. It was Drake. Something like that. And so and he ends up being the top earner that week so he gets the most food. So everyone Again. has to share, share one bowl of gruel. Broth. And so, stew broth, it looked like. Yep, so they steal that card, make their way to the control room, and they kind of have a heart to heart, but Benny pushes a, a random button on one of the control panels. They, like, oh, he turned him, he's turning in Omega. And so, it's expected, like, of course, that's how it's going to happen. Um, but they talk about home life, and Benny's like, this is my home. Like, I wouldn't want to leave because it's my home. It's all I know. And Omega's like, well, our ship is like our home. That's all, that's all we know, blah, blah, blah. And while they are trying to get to the codes or whatever to tech for the race shield, <coughs> um, Omega realizes that the Ipsium that's being mined is at full quality. It's not a degraded thing, so... Mako is just lying and stealing funds for himself and not sharing with the workers. So, well, this, and then Omega also gives her, her rations to, uh, Benny. And he's like, why would you give me this? Cause like, it's so valuable to him. Like, why would you share food with someone? And so he's just like, you can tell he's kind of torn cause like he just turned it out in Omega and she's being so nice to him. So then um, Mako arrives. I was like, good job, Benny. Blah, blah, you might be top earners next time around. Blah, blah, blah. And so Omega, her heart is broken, as you would expect. And Mako takes Omega. But then... The Bad Batch crew, they're on their way to, because they got found out, like, some crew members from the mine found them working on a ship. So then they ran, and so the crew is chasing after them. And then, but then there's, like, a standoff on a bridge. So obviously someone's going to fall off and die. Classic storytelling. Yep. And... Uh, just classic, like, oh, you can't do anything because we're going to threaten Omega's life. We're going to throw her into the lava down below. <laughs> classic. Well, because they weren't, 
because he said like you can't shoot us like Marco like he was like you can't shoot because if you miss anything we're all gonna blow up and then they're like well we won't miss we don't miss and then he was like well if you're not gonna miss we're gonna like you're not gonna shoot anyways because we have Omega floating there to death to her yeah. doom and so while this is happening, Benny, he's looking at the data pad, looking at the information about the quality of the Ipsium. And he finally runs out and says, you lied to us, Mako, da, 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 da. You've been stealing money from us. So then the kids, they start getting mad at him. And then, was it Tech and Wrecker shoot the droids there? And then Mako's like, throw the girl. And this is like the mo the worst thing Omega could ever do, even though it worked out. Like she is about to get thrown off, but she grabs a droid that's throwing her off and grabs him, so mm -hmm. she does not fall right away. But Hunter, he's swinging over with a grappling hook to like catch her, and so they time it just perfectly. Like classic Star Wars. If that droid held on for like one half second longer Omega would have fell to her death. Hunter would have had to catch her on the way back. <laughs> would have been... He would have swung past her and then had to try to catch her on the way back. Right. So that was a really gutsy move by Omega at that timing. Because he can't practice that. Like No. And dude you you know her arm popped out of socket when he caught her too. Possibly. Like, with how fast she was falling and how fast he was going that that can't feel good, like, like the physics behind that. Like, have you ever, like, <coughs> what was it MythBusters? They like, well, I remember. I think I brought this up in a older episode, but like they did the, te like they did the chastity belt test or whatever. Not the chastity belt, like <laughs> the test where uh, Luke swung across with Leia. Oh yeah. And they did that test, and like they're like, there's no way that would hold their weight. Well, yeah, but and how do they know what the cord is made out of, though? It's a space cord that they slung on. True. It could be like Baskar, then Baskar. Yeah, like, or, they don't know. Yeah, that's true. That's true. They didn't think about that. That's Come on, and um, Adam Savage, that's his name, he worked on the prequel movies. Like, he should know better. Like, Yeah, have you ever watched his videos? That's the guy with the, the blonde guy, right? With the beard and stuff? No, that's the red-headed guy. Who's the ball? The the other guy. I don't, I don't know his name. Oh, but I don't know his name. But he, like, he does, like, daily prop stuff where, like, on YouTube. Where he was like, you know what? I'm just going to do this. And, like, he, like, made, like, uh, like, Gandalf's, like, pipe. And he's like, this is how you make it. And he made it, like, one day. And it, like, looks, like, perfect. I'm like, bro, people... <laughs> try so hard like he'll make his own prop replicas and it's like i don't know he's pretty cool i don't right. know his name or i would give him a shout out because he listens you know sure <laughs> <Probably does. laughs> so omega is saved then the kids start moving in on mako he's like i don't need to draw it i can take you all on my own and he has like a cane and like a claw arm. That's like how he looks. And he completely swings and misses with his cane. He's trying to hit some kids. And his momentum makes him fall over the edge of the thing. And somehow, like he doesn't with it. Okay, so I'm, gonna, I'm not trying to shame him for his weight. But if you're falling off a ledge like that, it's going to be hard to hold that much weight on one arm. Well, was it, what's his fake arm though? No, because then Benny, he reaches down to try and help him, and his claw arm grabs, he right. grabs his claw arm. And so good on Benny for trying to love his enemy, trying to save him. But just like, was it Shadow in Homeward Bound, he's just too old. <laughs> Mako, he's just too heavy and he <laughs> that was such a deep cut bro like <laughs> you know what i'm talking I, about I, though no, i get I, honestly like i watched it i watched homer bound like 
I want to say like three weeks ago. Really? They yeah, because watched it, that in like twenty years. Because it was dude. we were like, what to watch on <laughs> Disney Plus, and it's You're on, on there. Disney Plus. Yeah. Oh dang! Maybe now that I have COVID, I'm gonna be home a lot. I have it, to watch that. It doesn't hold up as much. As what? It, uh, it's kind of sad. It doesn't hold up, but. But, like, I was watching it with Miles, like, because he loves animals right now. So, I'm like, oh, you like this movie? I love this. And I clicked it and watched it. I'm like, bro, I'm having a hard time watching it. And then I look at him, and he's, like, not interested at all. I'm like, never mind. This is not it. <laughs> was this, was that scene, though, still pretty heart-wrenching? No, no. He's just too old, and he's trying to get out with the mud. Yeah. That was pretty sad. I remember that being really sad. You ever watch the second one? Yeah. I think this – I like the second one more, I think. As a kid, I don't know. I don't know if it holds up. It might be on Disney Plus too, but they had the original one on Disney Plus. I know that because there's one that's even older. Really? That's like from like the seventies or something. Oh, it's like yeah. in a classic movie section with like, uh, was what's the name of that movie where they're all stuck on an island and they make like the coolest. Swiss Family Robinson. Oh, right? yeah. Yeah. Like, it's in that section, like, with really old Disney movies. Interesting. I, I've never seen that one. But, yes, Mako, he's just too heavy, yep. and he falls to his death. And so, that's about it. They go their separate ways, and, like, Benny's like, if you need a thief, I'm here for you. So yep. well, and they're all the boys are working together, and so they're sharing r r rations. And at the end of it, they're like, "Benny, it's time for chow or whatever." So we know they're eating. Yep, it's like a weird rivalry too, because I've it made it seem like they're gonna have a rivalry, but then like my thought was like, "What's what's to make the what in this scenario makes." So that kid doesn't become Marco again. I don't know. I think they but just know I that they're so betrayed that they have that common, the common bond. And it wasn't like that deep of a rivalry. Like it was more like Benny was just depressed, like sad because he could never get in with Marco. He was never high enough to. Yeah, they're definitely pretty sad, but. You know who is never sad? Lucy. Well, we don't know that. She might be sad sometimes. I've never heard anything sad from her. I'm sure she does sometimes sure. get sad. But yes. we've only known her to be very cheerful. So let's hear a cheerful commercial from Lucy. Hey, everyone. Lucy here. And I'm pleased to tell you that some of my fellow Empire Radio listeners and I made a fantastic original Star Wars audio drama all through sending voicemails to the pod. It's called the Voicemail Cinematic Universe. Here's the thing. We need your help. The Empire's goal is to get an illustration made by us listeners for every single voicemail. And we have quite a ways to go. So if you have any sort of artistic abilities, join the crew. Any type of media is welcome. Lego scenes, digital art, paintings. You could even make food art. If you answer this call to action, there's a link in the description that leads directly to a Google Doc. It tells you exactly how to submit your art. This whole VCU project will be 100% fan-made, and we can't wait to see everyone's work. In the words of Emperor Palpatine, do it. Do it. Do it. Yep, we haven't gotten a submission for a while, so please, send in your art. Yeah. All right. Well, so we, moving forward, now this is episode 10, so we have six more episodes left. And so that ends up being five weeks worth of episodes because the last two episodes are going to be ran together. I thought there's another set of two episodes. Yeah, it's, it, no, it's just the finale is two episodes. Oh, okay. oh yeah, because we already had two sets of two episodes. Yeah, so that would be, brings us to the end of March. So five weeks in... March. So, I don't know. We don't really have any direction this season. Like we've had like we said we've only had one episode with Crosshair, so we don't know what's going on with him. What's Ram the title for next week? It is 
One second. Metamorphosis. Metamorph. Yes, metamorphosis. So that's about changing. Maybe cloning. if we can finally get some cloning stuff with Nala Say that was kidnapped by the Empire at the end of last season. That would be cool. And I want to see... <coughs> I remember from the trailer, the original teaser trailer, there was like a one frame shot of like what we believe is to be the Zillow Beast. So, like, <laughs> come on. Come on, guys. Like, maybe they're just trying to get to these last few episodes. Um, but... Yeah, like I said, I'm just... I'm sad know. because I know a lot of people are just done with the show after this week. And if you're those people, maybe that maybe that will be Jeremiah's question. Are you guys done with Bad Batch? Yes or no? What's the poll? Jeremiah's well, writing this down. so he doesn't We'll worry. do that so I don't forget. Are you done with this episode or is this season of Bad Batch? Are you disappointed by this season or something like that? So think about it. Hopefully I can actually post a question again this week Last if not you can just do a poll yes yeah or i'll no. do a poll like yes or no are kind of like a five star for five star four star three star type of thing rating but yeah i don't know like do you think that they're gonna get benny back this season for a, a job where they need to steal something or do you think that's not be till next season if assuming that there's a third season I don't know. I don't care enough. <laughs> His character <laughs> brings nothing to me. So I don't know. Like, right. m- my guess will probably be next season, but I guess we could get him this but season. It, it's so weird because the Bad Batch has literally been on missions to steal things. Yeah, like, why are they? That's what they do. It's like half their missions are them stealing things. Why would they need someone else to do that? I don't understand. Right. So it's just... wasn't that great. Like when he pickpocketed the dude, he wasn't even like that smooth. He bumped the dude. Yeah. Like there's better pickpocketers in France. Like what are you talking (laughs) about? Sorry. Hey, don't call people in France if you're listening in France. We're not judging. No, I'm not judging, but y'all know what I'm talking about. I'm just saying, like, <laughs> it wasn't that impressive of a pickpocket. And right. so, like, I don't, I don't, I hope they, the writers, if they're going to put him in for next season, they like look at the results of this episode and they're like, his character doesn't really matter. Never mind. Yeah. But, like, I Honestly, still... it has to be in this season because people are going to forget about him next season. <laughs> There's that too. But like, here's the thing. If they don't bring him back, I'm going to be extra mad though for wasting our time with this episode. Like, they better bring him back and he'd Bro. be better. At least we can say at least it was for something. that they wasted our time. <laughs> oh, gosh. And, like, the only thing we're going to get out of this result is that Hunter's going to be mad at Sid because she didn't pick him up faster. Right. Even but, though they still got their shit back. So like, but you know, if, they, if she did pick him up, though, they, they wouldn't have gotten, gotten their, their shit back. So, yeah, it's like, I don't... <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like, if, if this is the result of, like, Hunter and Sid clashing heads finally, if it's because of this, Hunter really doesn't really have a good point because they... By her slacking and not getting there fast enough, they're able to get their shit back. So it's not even a big deal. And that's what I'm saying. Like, to me, like, this episode or these last two episodes, like, we thought this was going to be so cool because it was going to be a character that we know. It was going to be a character that was going to, like, change the outlook and the look of the galaxy if it was Boba and Omega. Like, we thought this was going to be a really intense thing. And it's honestly not at all so it's just like I don't and and you know Jeremiah you said in the beginning of this episode like people get complained that like the universe is too small but it, it, it needs to be too small with those characters though 
Because Boba is very important to the clone to the clones. Sorry. So Makes like sense. I don't I I feel like that that like logic and what people think is just not relevant <laughs> to me. Like it doesn't make sense. Right. So well I don't know. It for me, like we you read it, Dave hasn't written a story or anything yet in this season and it's obvious clearly obvious so right but you know what is also very obvious and clearly obvious what's that true how good wesley andrews is and how you guys should buy wesley andrews coffee or tea yeah with our promo code and if you want to know that promo code Listen to this commercial from Wesley Andrews Coffee and Tea. Hey everyone, Andrew here. I'm pleased to tell you that the sponsor of today's episode is Wesley Andrews Coffee and Tea. If you don't know anything about Wesley Andrews, you definitely should. They're an award-winning coffee roaster and shop in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and they make fantastic coffee. The awesome thing is that whether you live in the Twin Cities or not, you can get their coffee beans delivered straight to your door by ordering them online. They even have a subscription service that ensures you never run out of amazing coffee. If you've been looking for some new coffee to try or a way to elevate your normal coffee routine, now's your chance. Head over to WesleyAndrews.cc, use the code Empire Radio, that's with a capital E and a capital R with no space at checkout, to get 15% off your first purchase of any bags of coffee or a coffee subscription. I can't think of a better deal. Get 15% off some great coffee, support a small business, and support your favorite Star Wars podcast. In the words of Emperor Palpatine, do it. Do it. Do it. All right. Well, any final predictions before we move over, <laughs> move on to our favorite part of the episode? Um, I just hope next week is worth watching. Considering they're going to battle with one of the best shows of all time coming out next week, Mando season three. And just so you guys, just a quick reminder, because Jeremiah says a lot of you guys turn it off before voicemail times. Next week, Wednesday, Mando season three is coming out. We're doing a podcast breakdown and a watch party. So go Ooh, over. Bring it back to, to watch parties. For Mando, yes. Yeah, so go over to YouTube or Go to twitch.tv slash Empire Radio if you want to catch those watch parties live. Um, and I don't know, have an exact time, so you have to go over there and follow so you guys get alerts when I go live for the watch party. Yeah. All right. Yeah, cool, yeah. cool. Well, let's transition over to voicemail time. It's voicemail time. All right, all right. Well, we only have one voicemail. Yeah, you said and, that earlier. And it is from Nate, who we know oh, from the Spotify Q and A. And he, I was willing to put down a quarter and say it was from Will. Wait, what was our bet last week? Remember, we bet a quarter. We are going to if, but then I remember in the middle of it because I said Hondo, you said Boba, oh, and in the middle of it, I said never mind, it's Boba. And we're both and wrong. Either week. way, there's a floating quarter quarter in the galaxy right now because neither of us won that yep but yes it's nate and he has a quick question for us let's take a listen sweet hey empire Raider, this is nate and my question for you today is have you seen the new ant-man movie if you have did you like it or did you not anyway thanks bye thank you nate for that question That's drew question. Have i have you not seen? and i do not plan to but go ahead but uh, yes, I did see it. And fun fact, right now, if you're listening, go into the description. I will have a link to needlesslynerdy.com where I wrote a, my first article for the website. Oh, nice. And it's a review of Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania. And if you want a little teaser of what I thought, it's a terrible movie. <laughs> it's so bad. It's yeah. It's this. My, my post. Did you see what I posted on Facebook over the weekend? I saw what you posted on Facebook, and I was like, "Well, that," because 
I mean, if you guys don't know, Jeremiah like likes some movies that a lot of people don't like. So right. I was just like, okay, if Jeremiah likes this movie, it still maybe be questionable. Maybe I won't like it. Well, Jeremiah, if Jeremiah hates a movie, I definitely <laughs> don't want to spend any of my time watching this movie. Yeah. So what I posted on Facebook was like, buy a ticket, wait two hours, sit down when the credits start, and just watch the and the mid credit and the end credit scenes because that's all that really matters. And so I mean, I, there are some good stuff. I would say Kang is the best part. Weren't you? supposed to take me to this movie with tanner wasn't that a thing it was gonna be you me and tanner we're gonna go watch this movie i vaguely remember we were going to do something together but was it this movie it was this movie because tanner's like i'll buy a ticket it's gonna be so good and jeremiah's like yeah we could all go together <laughs> i, I wonder if it was something like that <laughs> and it's good tanner, because I Tater, when you're listening to this, you can buy me a ticket to a different movie then because... <laughs> and it's also good because I I think when I saw it on Saturday, I already had COVID, so... Oh, yeah, I know. So everybody know. in that theater has COVID, so... <laughs> GG. Um, but, yeah, it's... Kang was really good. I like... Is it Jonathan Majors is his name? Like, he's... Like, it's good. Like, I'm excited for Kang. I mean, that as... was the only reason why I was, like, semi-interested in seeing it. But and honestly, honestly, the reviews are not that bad though for it. Critic reviews are really low, but Correct. like audience reviews are higher than that. But like, it's like an eighty for audience review. Yeah. First of all, that's Rotten Tomatoes, and that website's just <laughs> like those Rotten Tomatoes. Those <laughs> things are like the thing that's very deceptive about Rotten Tomatoes is the percents reflect a positive review, meaning. It can still be like a C, an average movie. That doesn't mean that it's good. Like, or it's gotcha. like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So those numbers are just like based on positive reviews or negative reviews, not whether the movie's actually good or not. So, mm -hmm. like, I don't know. I say just go on YouTube and see if you can see some bootleg and credit scenes. Oh, I'll just wait scenes. until Disney Plus comes out <laughs> to watch it. Or I actually, no, I won't watch it. <laughs> I'll just go and watch the ending credit. Or there's probably, yeah, there's an early movie okay, on YouTube. I will say that it matters because what happens with Kang in the movie is what causes something in the mid credit scene. So it's like the mid credit scene only happens because of what happened in the movie. But, like, I don't know. I would say still see it because it's still part of the MCU. It still matters to the bigger story. But go matinee so you're only spending – Half the cost or but, something. Okay, so my question is though, like they always say, like the other Ant Man movies do bring stuff to it, and I've never seen one of them, and I understand what's going on. So, because for me, the yes, character okay, of Ant Man is just stupid. For me, honestly, that is stupid. well. So there, they, there is a major reference and plot point in the, this movie based on what happened in the first movie, but you're reminded of what happened based on like a recap or like a flashback or something in the movie. So mm -hmm. it's like, it doesn't matter. So yeah, I'll probably just not watch it and people catch me, tell me what's going on. And like the new Spider-Man movie when it comes out or something, I'm more, I'm really excited for the into the spider verse. That movie is going to slap. Oh, the next Spider-Man. Yes. One. Yep. That's exciting. And then, yeah, Guardians of the Galaxy is oh. the next movie. And we're supposed to get two shows. Loki season two. I'm excited for that. And Secret Invasion this year too. But but Loki was like the first introduction to this character. The bad the new bad. Yeah, King. So like if you don't if you don't watch Loki, are you gonna know who King is? Do they explain it in the show? Well, so because this is the multiverse saga, every mm -hmm. king we see is a different king. Oh, I see. So the king we see in Loki season one is a different Loki this? than we see in a different king, king we see in this movie. And then so all the other kings that we see moving forward are going to be 
Kangs from different mm. universes. So another reason why I knew the show, the movie wasn't doing that great, was because they came out with like a different trailer, like this week, and Kane is like on the front, and like his he has lines and everything. When before the first trailer <laughs> was like a glimpse of him, right? But it wasn't really like up front, and now it's like him. So. All right, but like I said, go, I'll leave go the, read his w- review though. If you the guys link in the in the description. Exactly why he hated it. Yep, and the, but there are spoilers in it, so if you haven't seen it yet and you don't want to be spoiled, I would say don't read it. But if you don't care, there's minor spoilers. So I'll go read it because I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we might as well just get out of here. See if we can get this done in less than an hour. It'll be a first time in a long time we've done that. So. And also in the link in the description below, there is our link at co slash Empire Radio. That's a landing page for everything for Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, uh, the VCU Illustration Project, which we heard about earlier, uh, our fan email, needlesslynerdy.com, which is where I have that first article, which is the podcast network we're part of. Go check them out. Um, and I think that's about it. We yeah, say it every week, it. so if you stay to the end, you know what it is, what it's all about. But just click on the link, yep. click on everything you need, uh, follow us everywhere. And like Drew said, he's going to be doing the watch parties for Mando Season 3. So on Wednesday nights, probably around 7-ish. Six, six, probably. Six, a little bit earlier. Hopefully. Uh, Central Standard Time, uh, he'll be jumping on doing that. And then we'll be doing our breakdown Wednesday nights. Yeah, right after, so... If you're watching the live stream, you won't have to go too far away. But, yeah. And Thursday, next week, we will be breaking down episode 11 of The Bad Batch as well. So, two episodes and pretty much until the main remainder of this show is done. So, March, you'll be getting two episodes of us every week. And we would love if you tune in every week for, for both of those episodes. Not just one. You got to do both. Right. All right. Prove me wrong that you guys yep. are going to not drop off of the show. Right. All right. Cool, cool. Well, you've been listening to another Bad Batch-tastic episode of Empire Radio. I'm Jeremiah. I'm Drew. And may the Force be with you. Always.